Master's work is like a mirror. When he says something, he creates a mirror effect. His words create a mirror in front of you for you to see for yourself. I have heard of a conversation between a Sufi Sheikh Ajnavi and his disciple Amini about Mullah Firuz. It goes like this. The Sufi master Ajnavi told his disciple Amini, write to Mullah Firuz and tell him that I have no time to engage in correspondence and therefore have nothing to say in response to his letter. The disciple Amini said, is it your intention to annoy him with this letter? Sometimes masters say things which apparently annoys the seeker. It is simply to create a mirror for you to see what it is going on within you. Ajnavi said, he has been annoyed by some of my writings. This annoyance has caused him to write to me. My purpose in writing the passage which angers him was to anger such as he. Amini said, and this letter will anger him further. Ajnabi said, yes. When he was enraged at what I wrote for the first time, he did not observe his own anger and that was my intention. He thought that he was observing me, whereas he was only feeling angry. Now I write him again to arouse his anger, so that he will see that he is angry. The objective is for man to realize that my work is a mirror in which he sees himself. Such is the work of each master to create a mirror so that the seeker can see himself. Amini said the people of ordinary world always regard those who cause anger as ill-intentioned because I am creating anger in you. Sometimes a statement, a gesture creates an anger. And this is the way master pricks something within you for it to surface. But if you are aware, you will see what is the intention of master in saying so and thus creating a situation to create a mirror of anger. Ajnabi said, the child may regard the adult who tries to remove a thorn from his hand as ill-intentioned. Is that a justification for trying to prevent the child from growing up? Amini the disciple said, And if the child harbors a grudge against the adult who removes the thorn, Master said, The child does not really harbor that grudge because something in him knows the truth. Disciple asked him, but what happens if he never gets to know himself and yet continues to imagine that others are motivated by personal feelings? Ajnabi said, if he never gets to know himself, it makes no difference as to what he thinks of other people because he can never have any appreciation of what others are really are. Amini asked, Is it not possible instead of arousing anger a second time to explain what the original writing was composed for this purpose and to invite Mullah to review his previous feelings? The master said, It is possible to do this but it will have no effect. Rather, it will have an adverse effect. If you tell the man your reason, he will imagine that you are excusing yourself, which is very normal. And this will arouse in him sentiments 
which are harmful only to him. Thus by explaining you are actually acting to his detriment. Disciple asked, are there no exceptions to this rule that man must learn through realizing his own state and that his state cannot be explained to him? Master responded, there are exceptions. But if there were enough exceptions to make any difference to the world, we would not by now have any Mullah Firuz left. This is a conversation between Sufi Sheikh Ajnavi and his disciple Amini about Mullah Firuz. Man's being is very simple. Being is simple, but personality is not. Personality is composed of layers upon layers that one goes on accumulating on himself. The personality is like an onion. There are many layers of conditioning, corruption, poisoning and hidden behind many layers what Sufis call filters is man's simple yet real being. But that simple being is behind as many filters that you cannot see it. And hidden behind these filters you cannot see the world either. When you have filters or simple thing that you have different glasses of different colors on your eyes, you cannot see the reality, what the world, what the existence is like. Because whatever reaches you is corrupted by the filters before it reaches you. Nothing ever reaches you as it is. You go on missing it. There are many interpreters in between. I say something, but you interpret it in the light of your filters. The message never reaches you. You see something. First your eyes and your senses falsify it. Then your ideology, your religion, your society, your church, they all falsify. Then your emotions, they falsify. And so on and so forth. By the time it reaches you, it has almost nothing of the original or so little that it makes no difference. You are, you see something only if your filters allow it and the filters do not allow much. Scientists agree with Sufis. They say we see only 2% of the reality. Only 2%? 98% is missed. When you are listening to me, you will hear only 2% of what has been told or what has been said and the remaining 98% will be lost. And when 98% is lost, <coughs> that 2% is out of context. It is as if you have taken two pages from a novel at random, one from here and another from there. And then you start reconstructing the whole novel from these two pages. 98 pages are missed. You have no linking what they were. You do not even know that they were. You have only two pages and you reconstruct the whole novel again. This will be your invention. It is not discovery of truth. It is, in fact, your imagination. And there is an inner necessity to fill the gaps. Whenever you see that two things are unrelated, mind has an inner urgency to relate them. This is how public opinion is created. In sociology, there is an example. My teacher used to give an example. Once it happened, a girl was riding a bicycle. 
her books fell down she had a tight trousers so she could not bend a boy was passing on the street he picked up those books and handed over to the girl the girl thanked him with a smile and to part their way the opinion the information reached that the two are friends quite often they are seen in public places restaurants holding hand in hand with one another and finally the news reached the two got engaged this is how things happen mind tries to fill in the gaps otherwise it feels very uneasy so you invent a link you fix those loose things with a link you bridge them and you go on inventing a world that is not there so before we can enter into this small but immensely valuable dialogue between the master and the disciple you have to understand what are these layers that act as filters gurjeev used to call these filters as buffers they protect you against reality you would have seen when the trains are the two compartments are joined there is a space where the two compartments are joined they are known as buffers so that there is no jerk when you are moving from one compartment to another because it is a joint they protect your lies they protect your dreams they protect your projections they do not allow you to come into contact with the reality because the very contact is going to be shattering sh- and shocking man lives through those lies Frederick Nietzsche is reported to have said please do not take the lies away from humanity otherwise man will not be able to live man lives through the lies they don't take the fictions away do not destroy the myth do not tell the truth because man cannot live by truth and he is right about 99.9% of people but what kind of life can there be through lies it will be a big life self and what kind of happiness is possible through these lies there is no possibility hence humanity is in great misery with truth as bliss with lies there is only misery and nothing else what else can be there but we go on protecting those lies because they are comfortable they keep you protected against bliss against truth against god and against all that is blissful sufis say that man is exactly like an onion and religion is the art of how to peel the onion and come to its innermost core that innermost core is your space meditation brings you to that inner space when you reach to that inner space something of the beyond descends in you it is unimaginable that is by why Quran pa Quran majid is unimaginable it is the outcome of that inner space where holy prophet has reached and unless you are capable yourself of going into that inner space you will not be able to understand the words of the masters something which has been said when one is in that inner space and you have not reached to that inner space instead you are using your intelligence to interpret it it is bound to create troubles whenever someone creates something or any act of creativity happens we are somehow touched by that inner space but it is like touch and go 
but in case of a master it is a permanent resting abode that's where he sojourns in that inner space sufis say that man is like an onion and religion is the art of peeling the onion and coming to its innermost core and what is the innermost core of an onion have you ever peeled an onion you go on peeling one layer after the other and so on and so forth then a point comes then the last layer is taken off and only emptiness remains in your hand that is fun if you go on peeling your being the last layer will be of being baka and beyond that will be the emptiness fana total dissolution total absorption in that mystical ocean that we know as existence religion calls it as god so you can think in this way at the very innermost core there is emptiness pure is god nothingness fana the space when tulsidas wrote ramayan he was in that inner space that is why the hanuman chalisa that he wrote is the outcome of that inner space whereas all other chalisas although they were written in the same format but they lack the experience of that inner space that hanuman chalisa has another time i will speak to you on the mysteries of this which is very important for us to know what happens when one reaches to that inner space and or composes something the first layer around the fana is that of baka individuality what religions call as self atman or soul but soul is already a step away from your being the self is already distant from your being buddha has the right word for it and he calls it anatta no self your innermost being is non being nothing is there or only nothing is the first layer the first fence that surrounds you is baka or individuality this is your true and simple being non being surrounded by being defined by being the real core is empty but emptiness has to be defined by something otherwise there will be no division between you and anything else so a thin a very thin layer of being divides you and that being is also circumference not the center at the center is fana dissolution or disappearance even at the point of baka individuality you do not meet that which is you are still there a trace of you still exists very little is but is still something is left of you and there is a still a thin line even that has to disappear in fana then you enter the center that god is a start from the other end to start peeling the onion first layer is made of corrupted physical senses never for a single moment think that your physical senses are as they should be they are not they have been trained in a particular way you see things that your society allows you to see them the way the society allows you to see them you see you hear things if your society allows you to hear them you touch things if the society allows you to touch them 
Man has lost many of his senses, for example, smell. Man has almost lost all sense of smell. Just see a dog and his capacity to smell. How sensitive is his nose. Man seems to be very poor. What has happened to his nose? Why can't he smell as deeply as dog or horses do? The horse can smell for miles. The dog has immense memory of his smells. Man has no memory. Something is blocked in his nose and he cannot smell. Those who have been walking deep into the layers say that it is because of the repression of sex that his smell is lost. Physically, man is as sensitive as any other animal, but psychologically, his nose has been corrupted. His smell is one of the most sexual door into your body. It is through his smell that animals start feeling whether a male is in tune with the female or not. You go by a dog, dog smells you and tries to feel if there is any smell of the female coming out of you. How does it happen? You go and play with the dog and then you come back to another dog. Dog tries to smell you and feels the smell of that dog that you had played some time ago. The smell is subtle hint. When the female is ready to make love to the male, she releases a certain kind of a smell. Only through that smell does the male understand that he is acceptable. If that smell is not released by the feminine sexual organism, the male moves away. He knows that he is not accepted. Man has destroyed the smell because it is very difficult to create a so-called cultured society. If your sense of smell remains natural, you are moving on the road and a woman starts smelling and gives you a signal of acceptance. She is somebody else's wife, her husband is with her. The signal is there that you are acceptable. What will you do? It will be very awkward and embarrassing. Your wife is walking with you and there is no smell from her body. And suddenly a man passes by and she gives this signal. And these are very unconscious signals. You cannot control them suddenly. Then you will become aware that she is interested in other men and she is welcoming the other men. That will create unnecessary trip. So down the centuries man has destroyed the smell completely. This is what happens naturally. It is not just accidental that in cultured countries much time is wasted in removing all kinds of smell from the body. The body odor has to be completely destroyed by the use of deodorants deodorant soaps, body wash and things like these and these we considered as part of our culture, a very advanced society. If you do not use these, your bathroom seems to be a very rusty time. It has to be covered by layers of perfumes, strong perfumes. These are all disguised. These are ways to avoid a reality that is still there, hiding behind these different perfumes. When you make love, male and female releases a certain kind of a smell. That a smell has to be destroyed if man is making love to a woman and woman is not really into it. She has not released that smell. The man will be offended, hurt. He will immediately feel that woman is not having any always. This is a reality and unless you understand this, 
master has experienced through his inner senses through his awakening all that happens and that's why he is a master and is capable of bringing about a transformation it is not just learning the scriptures reciting them that makes one a master the smell has to be completely destroyed so that the man never knows that woman was simply pretending that she was having an orgasm just making empty gestures be fooling him but pressing his ego and he feels satisfied because the woman looks satisfied but once the smell is destroyed there is no way to detect whether she is really satisfied or not the smell is very sexual this is the first layer that is why we have destroyed the nose utterly destroyed even in language you can see the difference to see means one thing to hear one thing but to smell means just the opposite you mean to see means a capacity to see to smell does not mean the capacity to smell it means that you are smelling even in language the repression has entered and the same has happened with other senses you do not see people eye to eye or if you do see them it is only for a few seconds master is tears into your eyes you cannot convive you have to look into it and through that he is entering into different layers of your being if you see it is thought to be offensive looking into somebody's eyes is considered to be offensive just to remember do you really see people or you go on avoiding their eyes because if you do not avoid them then you may be able to see a few things which the person is not willing to show it is not good manners to see something that he is not willing to show so it is better to avoid it we listen we listen the words but we do not see the face because many times the words and face are contradictory a man is saying one thing but he is showing something different gradually we have completely lost the sense of seeing the face the eyes the gestures we only listen to the words the message of the master is not contained in the words but in gestures in his looking at you and many such things that surround it too just watch this and you will be surprised how people go on saying one thing and showing another and nobody detects is because we have been trained not to look directly into the face or even if you look the look is not that of awareness not that of attention it is empty it is almost as if you are not looking we hear sounds by choice we do not hear all kinds of sounds we choose whatsoever is useful we hear and to different societies and different countries different things are valuable a man who lives in a primitive world in a forest in a jungle has a different kind of receptivity to sound he has to be continuously alert and aware of the animals his life is in danger you need not be alert you live in a cultured world where animals do not exist anymore and there is no fear your survival is not as steep your eyes do not function perfectly because there is no need have you seen a hare or a deer how attentive they are how sensitive 
Just a small sound, a dead leaf is stirred by the wind, and the deer is alert. You do not have noticed it at all. The great music surrounds life, a subtle music, but we are absolutely unaware of it. The rustling of the tree leaves, the wind, the ocean roaring, but we create artificial musics around for entertainment. Sit down by the side of the river and you can see the natural music flowing. Our bodies, our body has made rigid. We live in a kind of frozenness. We are cold, closed, unavailable to such things. We are so afraid of life that we have killed all the possibilities through which life can make a contact with us. People do not touch either, each other, they do not hold hands, they do not hug each other and when you hold somebody's hand, you feel embarrassed. He feels embarrassed. Even if you hug somebody, it feels as if something wrong is happening and you are in a hurry to get away from the body of the other because the other's body can open you. The warmth of the other's body can open you. Even children are not allowed to hug their parents. There is a great fear. And all fear is basically deep down, rooted in the fear of sex. This is the first layer, the corrupted senses. There is a taboo against sex. A mother cannot hug her son because the son may get sexually aroused. That is the fear. A father cannot hug his daughter. He is afraid he may get physically aroused. Warmth has its own way of working. Nothing is wrong in being physically aroused or sexually aroused. It is simply a sign that one is alive and one is immensely alive. But the fear, the sex taboo says keep away from a distance. It happens to many people when they are dying. One of the reason is that repression that they continuously repress certain things. The first layer of corrupted sense is disappearing, death is moving in and they are becoming like a small children once again. You would have noticed the small children like to play with their genitals. The small children continuously play with their genitals. They have not yet been corrected. They enjoy their bodies, they love it, they are playful about it, it is a fun. But the man is no longer old, he is becoming younger again, death is taking the layers away, that is one thing. Another thing is that when a man died, for a single moment all his senses become totally alive, as they have been if they were not corrupted. It is like a flame before the lamp goes out. The flame burns brightly with intensity for a single second. Exactly the same happens when life is going out. For a single moment the last effort is made to live and one burns bright with total sensitivity. Another reason man is dying, the circle is complete. Naturally death is very close to birth. Death is very close to life. It is very crescendo of life. Life is the beginning, then death is the ultimate flouting, the crescendo of life. Life comes out of sex energy and life is moving back into energy. That is why one day you are born out of sex and it is through sex alone one day you go beyond sex. And that is why Sufis, all the masters have focused, emphasized on 
the seeker getting married. Marriage does not mean simply marriage. It means a meditative way to transcend beyond sexuality. And if it does not happen that way, you are not yet married. Marriage means a point comes in when sex is meaningless for you. It's not that you are suppressing it. It has no meaning in you. You are satiated. Just as when you are hungry, you are looking here and there all about what to eat now. You eat a little bit, but that does not satiate you. You go and take something else. And the full satiation comes when you have a complete meat. Then you feel so satiated that you do not feel hungry for another 3-4 hours. But when sex is fulfilled, you may live like friends, but there is no need to indulge in sex because total satiation has come. The man is dying, the circle is complete. Naturally, death is very close to birth and it is the crescendo of life. Life comes out of sex energy and is moving back into sex energy. But all our senses are corrupted. We have not been allowed to be natural. Hence man has lost dignity, innocence, grace and elegance. This is the first layer. And because of all these repressions, the body has become known orgasmic. There is no joy. It has happened both to man and woman. In almost this in almost the same way, but man has gone deeper into corruption than woman because man is perfectionist, neurotically perfectionist. Once he gets an idea, he tries to go to the very extreme of it. Women are more practical, less perfectionist, less neurotic, more earthly, more balanced, less intellectual, more intuitive, they have not gone to the very end. It is good that woman has not become as neurotic as man. That is why they still have some dignity, some grace, some roundedness of being and some poetry. But both have been corrupted by the society and has and it has become very hard. Men more, women a little less, but the difference is only of degree. Man has been, this is the first layer, the corrupted senses. Because of this layer, everything that enters, you have to pass through these filters first. And this filter destroys, interprets, manipulates, gives new color of its own, projects, invents, and the reality becomes very calm. When this layer disappears, that is the whole effort of yoga to make your body alive, sensitive, young again, and give you senses, give your senses the maximum function then one functions with no taboos around. Then lucidity, grace and beauty flows. Warmth arises again. Openness and growth happens. One is constantly new, young and is always on an adventure. Body becomes orgasmic. Joy surrounds you. Through joy, the first Corruption, the first layer disappears. Hence my effort is to be happy, to be celebrating, to enjoy life, to accept the body, not only to accept it, but to feel grateful that God has given to you. Body has its own intelligence. And such is such a sensitive body with so many doors to relate to reality, the eyes, ears, nose and touch. Open all these windows and let life breeze 
flow. Let life sunshine in. Learn to be more sensitive. Use every opportunity to be sensitive so that first filter is dropped completely. I have seen the master chef when he is judging any dish that is brought in front of him. First he smells it and through his smells he gets the smell of all the spices that is there. How sensitive that nose could be, the looks. When he puts it in his mouth, he makes gesture as if he is trying to analyze what different tastes are there. This is what one can drop the first layer. If you are sitting on the grass, do not go on pulling it up and destroying it. But this is what happens there. When you are sitting on the grass, close your eyes, become the grass, be grassy. Feel that you are grass. Feel the greatness of the grass. Feel its wetness. Feel the subtle smell that goes on being released by the grass. Feel the dew drops on it, that they are on you. Feel the sun rays playing on the grass. For a moment be lost into you. You will have a new sense in your body, new sense of your body and do it in all kinds of situations. When you are around a river, in a swimming pool, lying on the beach in the sun rays, looking at the moon in the night, lying down with closed eyes on the sand and feeling the sand, millions of opportunities are there to make your body alive once again. And only you can do it. Society has done the work of corruption. You will have to undo this. And once you start hearing, seeing, touching, smelling, then you smell the reality, the life. This is the first layer. The second layer is of conditioning, social, political, religious, ideological belief system 